Good morning all, uh, my name is Courtney Ford, I am the Risk Authority Administrator. Welcome to today's webinar, being the Sprinkler System Service and Maintenance Requirements. As advertised, this webinar is being held to refresh all interested parties concerned with service and maintenance of sprinkler systems to meet current LPC standards for commercial and industrial properties. Now, before I introduce our presenter, I just wanted to outline a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is pre-recorded. However, if you have any technical IT or sound issues with today's webinar, please use the question panel to the right of your screen and I will do my very best to assist if I can. Please note that during the presentation, all participants will remain in listen only mode. We encourage you to submit questions at any time throughout the presentation. I know that your questions will not be seen by other members of the audience. However, they will be passed on to the presenter and it will be published as a Q&A document on our website. A reminder that all of our webinars are recorded and will be available to listen again by the past webinar area on the Risk Authority website along with the presentation slides. Now I am pleased to hand you over to our presenter for today, Dale Kinnersley. Good morning everyone. Welcome to the Sprinkler Systems Service and Maintenance Requirements uh, webinar from the FPA and Risk Authority. My name is Dale Kinnersley. I'd like to just uh, introduce myself as a requirement of the CPD award. This CPD, this has uh, been awarded a 45 minute CPD and um, to uh, enable this award to be provided by the Chartered Insurance Institute uh, I have to provide you with my credentials. As can be seen on there, I'm a qualified sprinkler design engineer. I have a European fire diploma in fire prevention. I'm a member of the Institute of Fire Engineers. I'm also a member of Engineering and Technology Institute. I'm a former technical director for Argus Fire. I've done 29 years in the sprinkler industry, and within that time, I undertake, uh, undertook uh, gas uh, design, mist design, water mist that is, uh, foam, enhanced uh, sprinkler systems, deluge systems, uh, fire detection systems. I'm now the principal consultant at the FPA. I'm also the convener of the Risk Authority Sprinkler Rules Working Group, which develops the uh, LPC technical bulletins. And I also sit on the BSI Sprinkler Rules Committee, uh, developing the, um, the British Standard Sprinkler Design Rules. Also included within this webinar uh, is, uh, and to, uh, to um, meet the requirements of the CPD award, I have to provide you with the learning outcomes associated with this webinar. So the learning outcome uh, that we're trying to understand and establish today is the requirements under the fire safety order. I'm going to go into a quick brief on the LPC rules and BSE and 12A45, the requirements for owner and occupier, the responsibilities for the uh, contractor, the service frequency requirements and what's uh, got to be serviced and maintained so that you have an understanding of the equipment that you have and how, when it should and should not be maintained. Uh, compliance requirements, whether the system, well, the service that you have on your sprinkler system is compliant or non-compliant. And also keeping uh, the records, uh, making sure that they ad there's adequate paperwork to um, establish that when anybody's doing an inspection of the system, it's been serviced and maintained to a standard, so record keeping is a requirement. I'd also like to mention that this webinar is being recorded and the presentation slides will be freely available for downloading on the Risk Authority webinar shortly afterwards. So sprinkler systems, they're installed to guard against an extremely unlikely and frequent events, but could have very significant consequences when they do occur. As such, sprinkler systems must lay dormant for very long periods of time but ready to operate at all times and these factors pose some unusual system reliability and maintenance challenges. It's therefore a requirement that a satisfactory sprinkler system maintenance regime uh, which also includes the review of hazard uh, is critical to the continued dependable performance of the systems and that it's correctly maintained, um, including all the periodic assessments that are required um, and obviously that it remains fully operational at all times. Uh, and finally, that it's appropriate to protect the hazard. So it would be no good having an ordinary hazard classification sprinkler system protecting a high hazard uh, warehouse that has storage of um, high category, high fire load goods. 
So the regulatory reform act, or, or known as the fire safety order, well, the fire safety order. Unfortunately, I'm not going to uh, discuss this all the way through with you, but as what I've shown on the screen there, highlighted is the main wording associated with maintenance. So basically, what the uh, fire safety orders actually say in Part Two, Article 17, is that if you have a fixed fire fighting system on the premises, it is subject to a suitable uh, system of maintenance, and it's maintained in a sufficient state in efficient working order and in good repair and that's a legal requirement so if you have a sprinkler system on your premises it should be serviced and maintained what standard well currently we have the lpc rules which incorporates bsen 12845 and this is a standard uh, that the sprinkler industry uses some sprinkler systems can be um, designed and installed for the requirements of meeting building control and approved document B, which is known as a life safety requirement. Um, but majority of sprinkler systems are installed for property protection purposes uh, as required by the insurers. Uh, and that's the LPC rules. So part one is the BSEN 12845, and that's a life safety standard as such, a uh, minimum standard pretty much used for approved uh, document B. Part two are the technical bulletins, which are additional requirements. And part three is supplementary information. I'll just go into these a little bit further for you. So the LPC rules, as we said, part one. Um, it's a British standard, a minimum standard to meet compliance with approved document B. And it allows people to escape. It's seen as a life safety document. Uh, it's the full SEN version and the SEN is the uh, European Council and it's published by the British Standards Institute. And it was first published as a standard which replaced BS 5306 Part 2 in 2003, and there's not been any real technical changes until the 2015 version, which has corrected some errors and updated some aspects. Part 2 is the um, property protection requirements as such. These are additional guidance notes that go over and above and beyond the requirements of the BSEN 12845. These are prepared by Risk Authority Working Group, which is um, the insurer's input. The FPA published these largely with the insurers, but it does not re represent a pan-insurer's perspective. These are generally applied where sprinklers are installed for property protection. So the, the property protection requirements that incorporate minimum standards for life safety, and they enhance them for the protection of property contents and business continuity. Uh, but they're not necessarily applicable for systems installed for life safety reasons, but generally accepted as beneficial because, as I say, they build on the foundations of BSEN 12845 as the standard. And part three is additional information, as we can see there, provides helpful information for system users. And it covers additional aspects um, under the risk authority, what we call risk control working documents. So it gives you ideas on how to protect from frost, uh, what water supply requirements are, regionality issues, and working in confined spaces. And all three parts form the LPC rules for automatic sprinkler installations, incorporating the British standard BSEN 12845. This is authored by the FPA and funded through risk authority. So the requirements for service and maintenance. So under BSEN 12845, we have clause 20 and 21 as shown on the screen. And clause 20 just breaks the, system, breaks the service and maintenance down from uh, weekly requirements up to 10 yearly. And clause 21 is talking about having a, an independent person inspect uh, the sprinkler system on an annual basis. These are also supplemented by annexes K and Q, which are also part of 12845. Together, these service requirements range from now weekly up to and including 25 year maintenance inspections. So um, annex Q actually replaces clause 21 and actually calls for an independent annual inspection. Uh, and annex K goes on to uh, for a requirement of sprinkler head inspections and pipework inspections. And these together represent the best practice for service and maintenance under BSEN 12845. However, as we are risk authority in the FPA and we produce the LPC rules, we're going to discuss today the service and maintenance requirements for LPC technical bulletin TB203, care and maintenance of automatic sprinkler systems. Um, this covers 
all the um, requirements of Clause 20, 21, Annex Q and Annex K. So moving on, both 12845 and the LPC Technical Bulletin TB203 are very similar in terms of service requirements, although the exact requirements are different within the service and maintenance frequencies. And as you can see there, there is quite a few requirements um, to be, um, well, disciplines to be undertaken frequently. Uh, and on top of this, the, uh, well, importantly, the, the, the building owner occupier or the system user uh, has to appoint a competent person who is nominated to undertake tasks related to the service and maintenance of the sprinkler system um, who have been trained, uh, given uh, adequate instructions um, on how to uh, maintain the sprinkler system or their responsibilities and disciplines that they should be undertaking uh, on behalf of the, uh, the building owner, occupier or system user. And that's whether they are permanent or contract staff. Um, and like I say, only appropriate trained personnel should be permitted to undertake the testing of sprinkler systems or emergency actions. So site service and maintenance. So site staff, as we can see there, it's important that they uh, have appropriate, there's appropriate staff um, that are given uh, suitable levels of instruction on at least the following. So they should understand the purpose of the sprinkler system, what it's there to do. Is it a property protection system? Is it a life safety system? Um, is it a suppression system or is it a controlling system? Uh, how the system operates in the event of a fire? What to do if the system operates either in a fire or accidentally? Um, maintaining a clear um, space around the sprinkler head so that they can operate correctly and control the fire in that, in that underneath that sprinkler head or within that area. Um, the avoidance of damage to sprinkler heads and pipe work that you get in warehouses where they get hit by forklift trucks or in uh, plant areas where uh, things get moved about and sprinklers get damaged. Uh, and most importantly, the upkeep of records and documentation. I'd like to also say on this particular slide that it's imperative that anyone carrying out system checks has been fully trained how to carry out these routines, how to do these safely and what to do in an emergency. We would also advocate that uh, anybody who's trained to work on the sprinkler system is adequately trained and certified so that they get a certificate to say that they've been trained on the system and they know what to do in the event of an emergency. The owner-occupier responsibilities, well, under the uh, fire safety order, it's a requirement that this is serviced and maintained to a reasonable standard and fully operating all times, so it's their responsibility. Um, and on the screen there, it shall, uh, there shall be a programme of inspection and make sure that the checks is carried out, uh, arrange a test and service schedule, keep the records, include and a logbook, most importantly, a logbook is kept on site. Um, so that it can be referred to and completed on a, on a weekly basis as the checks are done. Um, the user shall arrange a test um, service maintenance schedule to be carried out with a sprinkler contractor. And this schedule should be fully compliant to the technical bulletin. Um, any deviations from this service and maintenance um, from the provider should be clearly highlighted to say whether it's compliant or non-compliant with regards to um, TB203. Uh, and the requirements within this particular standard. Um, the installer should provide the uh, user with documented inspection and checking procedure for the system. So when a sprinkler system has been installed, they should be provided this information. They should be trained so they understand the system. And the programme shall include instructions on the actions to be taken, such as faults, operation of the system, emergency starts of the pumps, or details of the weekly routine. So again, owner-occupier responsibilities, this is covered in TB203. And what it also sta what it states in there is the responsible person on behalf of the owner occupier. Once he's had training and he's got certification, they're permitted to carry out weekly checks, weekly tasks, and monthly routines. From this, that is the only requirement under the under the technical bulletin that they should be undertaking. All of the um, service and maintenance disciplines, quarterly up all the way up to and including 25 yearly, should be undertaken by a service and maintenance contractor, um, with the exception obviously there on an annual basis that there is an independent sprinkler inspection undertaken of the system to meet compliance with TB203. 
So moving on, the weekly checks, I'll now run through the required service and maintenance activities that need to be undertaken to meet compliance with TB203. And as can be seen there, we have a standard valve set on the, on the right hand side. Um, so what should be done on a weekly basis? These are just checks. So re recording that there is um, pressure on the system. Looking at the gauges there on that particular picture, there is no pressure in the system. So the system, there is an, system is isolated. As you can see, the valve at the bottom is, is shut. So that's a requirement. Check all water levels. If you've got um, water storage tanks or if you're using rivers, canals, private reservoirs, that there is water, in, water available at all times. And as mentioned there, the correct position of stop valves, which control any flow of waters to the sprinkler system, they should be checked on a weekly basis. And this isn't a, a maintenance thing, it's just a visual check to make sure things are done. Service and maintenance tasks, now these are things that you actually physically have to do. So we have to run the water alarm gong for a period of 30 seconds. We have to pump, uh, perform an automatic start on the pumps uh, spark test. We do a, re a diesel engine restart test. Check the trace heating, uh, local heating systems for correct function. Most of the time when I do a sprinkler inspection, I go into a pump house and it's cold uh, and the uh, heating system's not working. Well, if you have a diesel pump in a pump house, that pump house has got to be maintained at 10 degrees C. Um, and then they obviously have heating, trace heating panels. They need to be tested on a weekly basis. And any transmission of uh, signals to the local fire and rescue service or central alarm stations, they should also be checked. And again, these are tasks that are required of the site staff. And moving on to monthly, there's a requirement on monthlies that the uh, electrolyte levels of all battery cells are checked. Uh, check the batteries are charging and uh, the security of the water storage tanks, uh, including the access ladders uh, and the ball valve housings, they're secured and locked. Uh, as we come on to a little bit later on in the presentation, you will understand the reasons why security of the storage tanks is very important uh, and the checking of them is very important, but that comes on a little bit later. But again, these monthly tasks are undertaken by the site's trained staff responsible for the sprinkler systems. And now we move on to quarterly. So moving on to quarterly, these following service activities have got to be undertaken by the third party approved and accredited service provider. And provided that there's li they are listed within their scope certification to perform service and maintenance within their uh, uh, approval scheme. And there are three approval schemes that are available. There's the LPS 1048 run by the LPCB, which is part of BRE. Uh, BRE. Uh, there's the FIRA scheme, which is by uh, Warrington Fire, or the IFC, International Fire Consultants. They provide schemes for um, service contractors to be signed up to and that they provide you with certification uh, and they have third party approval to undertake these tasks. So looking at quarterly, all flow, uh, flow alarm devices shall be checked for the correct function. So every 13 weeks, the flow switches and the uh, pressure switches shall be tested. The review of hazard. This is a quarterly requirement uh, in both the British Standard and um, the LPC Technical Bulletin TB203. And this is the discipline that's most infrequently carried out and missing from most service and maintenance schedules, but one of the most important. This particular requirement um, is a review to obviously there changes of structure, occupancy, storage configuration, change of heating, lighting, equipment, the classification of the building. If it was once used for storage, it's now used for manufacturing processes. It's changed from a storage risk to a process risk. If it was an office block, that's now being converted to a woodworking shop or a plant room. It changes the risk, the hazard has changed, and it should be take, undertaken on a 13 week basis every quarter. As looking at showing the pictures there, there's pictures that we've got shown on the screen there, uh, show some peti petition modifications below full ceilings where the sprinkler system's not has been modified, not been modified, sorry, to suit the uh, to suit the new petition changes, and it leaves sprinkler heads too far from petitions and not covering the floor head um, adequately. So petition changes that have been um, have been modified we've got sprinklers too far fire started in the corner there's no sprinklers within these the right vicinity to uh, operate it would take longer for the sprinkler system to operate 
looking at this picture here, picture one on the left-hand side, shows that the storage has exceeded its limitation for the system and the sprinkler head clearance is, pro is compromised. So we're supposed to have a 500 mil clearance from all sprinkler heads to anything below. And on this particular picture here on the left-hand side, you can see a sprinkler and storage right up into the ceiling. And on the picture on the right-hand side, shows that there's some sprinkler modifications been done. So the remove of, removal of some, of some ceilings um, and the sprinklers have just been left there and objects are now blinding the sprinkler heads from providing the spray pattern and discharge pattern. Uh, the heads are also too low from the soffit so it will slow the activation time um, and sprinklers then will take longer for them to operate because they're not in the hottest gas layer. And all these obstructions and all these changes have affected the performance of the sprinkler system. And this would have been picked up on the quarterly uh, review, of, review of hazard. So the requirement of the review of hazard, so four checks per year is required. However, three checks of these allowed in the TB2, TB203 can be undertaken by the owner occupier in the form of a checklist. So this, your incumbent sprinkler co contractor will allow you to undertake these on uh, three of the four requirements per year. However, the last uh, final check must be undertaken by a suitably qualified competent person from the sprint. So you're looking at a qualified design engineer or a qualified project engineer who's got the basic certification to allow them to go and do these checks. Um, and the checklists cover some of the um, the bullet points that are on the screen. So have any structural uh, alterations been made since the last review? Have there been any changes in storage height? Are for frost protection um, measures as adequate? Um, if you've got um, racks, um, are the flues kept clear and designated by the design requirements? Have there been any problems with the sprinkler system? Have there been any alterations with the sprinkler system? These should also all be recorded and kept on file and kept within the logbook. And these are, as I say, if you haven't had these quarterly reviews done, then your system's not compliant to TB203 or even BSCN12845. Six monthly requirements. So um, alarm valves, they need to be overhauled. The moving parts of these alarm valves um, need to be um, exercised in accordance with the um, supplier's instructions. Um, and if you've got any alternate valves, which are you will only have now on existing systems because they are now not permitted. They will be every six months. You will change them over in the wet from in the in the in the warm weather season from dry to wet and vice versa. As we're um, approaching the colder weather, you will move the, the drain systems down and change them over from water to air. Stop valves. All stop valves controlling the flow of water to sprinklers shall be operated to ensure that they're in working order. And this includes all water supply valves, alarm valves and zone valves and any other subsidiary valves on the system. And the picture on the right hand side there shows a standard uh, dry, alarm wet, uh, dry alarm control valve set. So this is just permanently charged with air. Water up to the valve and air on it, uh, uh, the other side on the, on the pipework side. Still on the six monthly requirements. So the town's mains, if you have a water supply, you don't have a, a, a pump and tank as such, you are directly fed from the town's main. You will be um, required to check the flow and pressure requirements that the town's main is supplying. And this is done um, by using a proving pipe. And as you can see bottom left there, there is a valve set on there with our very left side approving pipe. Top right picture also shows you the uh, the the gauge that you, you read the flow on as you're checking the pressure on the town's main and you will check the various flows and pressure requirements which are there covered on table six. Um, so for your different hazard classifications, there's a different pressure and flow requirement from your water supply. Also, if you have a water supply, you have a pump and tank, you have a pressure tank, you have a single, uh, you have duplicate pumps, etc. Um, you need to do a flow and pressure test to ensure that these are providing you the requirements needed to supply the correct flow and pressure in the fire area for your sprinkler system. Water supplies. 
still on pumps and tanks again we've just mentioned water supply should be tested to verify the pump shall start automatically via the pressure switches um, and there's also a requirement in tv203 there's an appendix which we uh, we come on to in a few slides time um, that shows you all the requirements that are um, been put together by the manufacturers and you carry out an, a six monthly interim service on the pumps so when you test the flow and pressure, you use the test return pipe and record all flows and pressures up to including the duty point of the pumps, or if, you, if your system has been fully hydraulically calculated, you add an additional 10%, so you test the maximum flow of the pump at 110% of its available duty, and you produce a curve, and this test should be undertaken by your service contractor, who, um, who are um, third party approved to do so. And what we would suggest uh, uh, in, in agreement with the uh, LPCB is that you test six points on a sprinkler, uh, sprinkler water supply, including closed valve, four, uh, duty point and four other flows to enable you to produce a system curve as shown on the right hand side there. Um, so that you can then verify if the pump is performing to duty and will do what it's supposed to do. Um, on top of that, any secondary electrical supplies from diesel generators or other sources shall also be verified to operate satisfactory, so your backup supplies need to be tested on a six-monthly basis as well. Excuse me, sorry. So moving on to annual. So there's quite a few checks to be done uh, annually. So on the diesel engine, you've got a fail to start test and manual restart the engine. Um, water storage tank, maintain the float valves in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation. Sprinklers, multiple controls and sprayers. So your, your nozzles as such, you need to review the condition and clean as necessary and replace any distorted or painted um, devices. Uh, and as can be seen in the photo top right there, this is a, a common issue that you'll see on a lot of um, sites that have sprinkler systems have been in for many years. These sprinkler heads need to be cleaned or this particular one, as you can see, the deflector plate is damaged. Therefore, that will need to be removed and replaced with this similar sprinkler of the same um, size. Any coatings on sprinklers in harsh environments, you can get petroleum, oh, not petroleum, you can get jelly um, coatings. They need to be touched up um, as necessary. You should be also checking pipe work supports. You should be checking visually for integrity and condition and replace where necessary any pipe that's been painted that needs to be touched up. Any protective wrapping should be um, checked and repaired and check that the path perk is satisfactory earth. Replacement parts should have a, there should be an adequate number of spares or a mixture of uh, inapplicable numbers to the hazard classification uh, and the correct sprinkler spanner for the heads. Uh, and there also should be an adequate number of um, spares that come with the, um, the pumps. Moving on, still on the annual. So again, fire and rescue central alarm stations, check the electrical installation needs to be done. Um, all stop valves, examine, overhaul and replace is necessary. Uh, pump suction chambers and screens, if you have them, it's to remove them. Settling chambers, check and replace is required for natural water supplies, if you have them. All flow alarm devices shall be checked on an annual basis. Dry alternate and pre-action control valves, a new requirement came in, um, I think it was last year. So undertake a functional test, as we described in TB203. So that must be performed on an annual basis and undertake all service requirements confirmed by the pump manufacturers uh, on an annual basis and also covered in Annex A in Table, table 2 of TB203. From this as well, there is an independent inspection requirement uh, and this is not undertaken by the sprinkler contractor. Um, sprink uh, it's a, um, an inspection on the system technically against standard. So this is done by an independent person who's qualified. Uh, it should be done on an annual basis and it shall report whether the system is um, in accordance with the standard. So it could be to be SEN 12845 or it could be an LPC um, sprinkler system. So the uh, report will be against one or two of those, you know, one of those standards. And uh, a report is written. Um, and as highlighted in the box there, when performing a periodic inspection, 
and it shall be undertaken by an independent body. In other words, sprinkler con contractors cannot undertake this uh, service requirement. And the reason why is that the industry would, would not like to have uh, sprinkler contractors marking their own homework or that of, a, or, uh, of others for their own gains. So that's why it's classed as an independent inspection. Uh, and on top of that, the uh, qualified person uh, is, got, is a designated individual who's got suitable training and is competent with knowledge and experiences of the system and shall be able to perform practical tests if required. The slide show now, uh, slide now shown is the, uh, the fire pump service requirements, which was agreed and confirmed by the pump manufacturers. So within um, uh, collaboration with um, all of the main LPCB approved sprinkler pump suppliers um, and, uh, and the risk authority, um, a meet meetings were held as to the best service and maintenance requirements that covers the requirements by the manufacturers. Um, what, what is required for the service and maintenance of, of fire pumps? Um, so um, obviously we've covered earlier in the slides every six months. We've also covered every 12 months, and now we're talking a biennial servicing requirement. And this is covered in uh, Annex A, Table TB203, Table 2. And as you can see, there are various different disciplines, some um, applicable on the six months uh, that are applicable on the 12 months and 24, but some aren't. But obviously, after 24, 24 months, there is uh, more service requirements and checks to be undertaken on the fire pumps. And these are normally done by the sprinkler contractor or they employ a specialist a pump manufacturer to undertake these requirements. Moving on to three yearly, so if you have pump suction chambers, screens, it's to remove the screens, settling chambers, check and clean and replace for natural water supplies, so canals, riverbeds, etc. Uh, foot valves in any uh, tanks that are below the water supplies. Uh, service any football, uh, foot valves in accordance with the uh, manufacturer's recommendations. And every three years on dry alternate and pre-action control valves, you undertake a full trip test as described in table uh, in technical bulletin TB203. Also three yearly, there is two different types of sprinkler tanks we, uh, that are approved as an above ground sprinkler water storage tank and um, they are either three year maintenance free or 10 year maintenance free. So please do not get confused as some people do that a three year tank is a three year guarantee and likewise for a 10 year tank. The tank suppliers provide a 12 month guarantee from commissioning date. And the LPC, LPS 1276 um, standard that they are uh, manufactured, installed and commissioned to basically means that they do not or should not need to be fully drained for a period of time, either three year or 10 year to perform maintenance activities. As said earlier, uh, tank security is, a, is an issue, but we'll come on to that on the next slide. But as you can see, these are a bit of a rogues gallery of uh, findings from sprinkler tank inspections. So the top left hand picture uh, shows that uh, the anti-vortex inhibitor device has become detached from the suction pipe. Um, and there is a stone holding it down. On the right hand side, uh, top right, we have uh, a lot of corrosion on the internal flange inside the tank. Uh, picture three and four are pretty self-explanatory. They haven't been moved or exercised or cleaned for a while and we've now got a growth uh, within the bull valve housing on the top of these uh, sprinkler tanks. And as mentioned earlier on in the presentation, as you can see, there is a requirement for tank security and removal of the access ladder and locking of the bull valve housing. Um, I think the uh, picture is pretty self-explanatory as can be seen as to why these things are required. Anything can get inside and uh, usually does. So three yearly tanks, they shall be drained, cleaned as necessary, they shall be examined internally and externally for corrosion, fitness for purpose, and have the fabric attended to as necessary, and restored in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. So every three years, if you have a three yearly maintenance free tank, you must drain that tank fully, clean it as necessary, and, and get the tank to as near as possible um, 
in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. And if you have a 10 year tank, so a 10 year maintenance free tank, you shall inspect it on a three yearly basis um, in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation again. Uh, however, if the con conditional cleanliness of the tank uh, indicates that the, there is a need that the tank should be drained, cleaned and have the fabric attended to in accordance with the manufacturer's uh, recommendations. However, in TB203, it is possible to use submersible cameras, ROVs, outside the uh, scope of regular service and maintenance to inspect a 10-year tank. Moving on from three-yearly to five-yearly, we have uh, dry pendant type sprinkler heads. So a batch sample shall be removed and sent away to an independent test house for testing based upon 12259-1 standards. And multiple control controls, which are also known as uh, multiple jet controls, um, they have uh, are covered in. Uh, they're largely covered in TB203. They're covered in um, technical bulletin TB213. But the requirement still is every five years a batch sample is sent away and removed away, uh, re sent away for an independent testing. Um, however, it also depends on the manufacturers because they may require them to be uh, sooner than every five years. Tanks 10 yearly, again, same, same as the three yearly, a 10 yearly tank after 10 years shall be drained. It shall be cleaned internally and externally, examined internally and externally for corrosion and fit for purpose. Again, have the fabric attended to in accordance with the uh, manufacturer's recommendation. And there's also a requirement there. Tank refurbishment works should generally aim to restore the tanks to the condition and structural integrity to that originally installed and consistent with the applicable tank approval criteria. So for above ground storage tanks, when you do any refurbishment work to the tank, it should be restored to uh, LPS 1276 standard or as near to as possible. Service and maintenance. So we've moved now from 10 yearly to 25 yearly, <coughs> excuse me. So a recent change of the requirement introduced earlier this year was the inspe inspection of sprinkler pipe work. As can be seen on the two pictures below that we do have issues with regards to corrosion and of uh, sprinkler pipe work and it also de depends on the environments that these pipes are installed, uh, well the sprinkler systems are installed to, and the condition of the water that's also uh, used and if, if it's been subject to service and maintenance and adequate flushing. So the new requirement that came in earlier this year is that the sprinkler contractor should provide a full detailed report on the condition of the pipe work which identifies uh, minimum sample requirements from the rules. Um, what we've actually asked this time, um, which is an enhancement to Annex K, is that various pipes are removed from the sprinkler system. Um, various parts, different pipe diameters, and these are internally inspected so um, the service contractor removes a pipe he inspects the external condition of the pipe the internal condition of the pipe and takes photographic evidence to prove that the pipe has been removed and it goes in a report from there if the pipe work condition is um, of a sufficient uh, uh, um, issue so to speak then that would need to be sent off for further analysis. But what we were asking for is that they write and take photographic evidence of the pipes that are removed in accordance with the requirements of TB203, so the number of pipes and the type pipes, so that um, a, a comprehensive report on the condition of the pipe work can be taken and provided to the client or and or their authorities having jurisdiction. Um, so that's the report requirement. Uh, the sprinkler pipe itself should be flushed thoroughly uh, until the water runs clear, inspected inter externally uh, and internally uh, by removing one metre sections of pipe from various locations I've just alluded to on the, uh, on the last slide, check for uh, microbial activities and any foreign, bo foreign bodies or sediment. Um, and should you find anything such as shown on the, on the pictures below uh, there, so as you can see, the, the, the condition of the pipe work there um, should be sent away for uh, to an independent test laboratory for a full report on the condition of the pipe work. 
sprinkle heads as well. There's a picture here is a sort of rogues gallery of the worst condition sprinklers received by uh, the FPA for testing. Um, so a sample of sprinkler heads has got to be removed from the system. Again, this, uh, this is a similar requirement to that of Annex K. So depending on the number of sprinklers installed on the whole system, a number of sprinklers need to be removed and sent away for analysis. And these will be sent to an independent test house uh, for, test, for function testing based on 12259-1. Um, and these are pictures of uh, actual sprinklers that we've had issues with. So uh, when we are currently undertaking tests, top left hand uh, picture there, um, the valve seat has managed has stayed in during the test. Next picture shows a painted sprinkler. So any, any painted sprinklers on site, they will need to be um, removed and replaced. Um, picture there shows a lodgement on the deflector plate. Uh, the next picture along shows that uh, the bulb is operated, but the, uh, it hasn't actually shattered and, and, and allowed the valve seating to be removed so that the water will not penetrate uh, through the sprinkler head and hit the deflector plate and provide a spray pattern. It's just lodged in. Uh, a picture on the right is pretty self-explanatory. That needs to be removed and replaced. And the picture on the left is the reason why we take these uh, sprinkler uh, pipes and um, sprinkler heads out and sent away for testing based on the condition that we find with regards to um, sprinkler heads and your spring system. So, <coughs> excuse me, service and maintenance records. So it's appropriate records including the sprinkler system logbook should be kept on site in a safe and secure location. It's imperative that these records for the sprinkler system are kept and filed available for review. Um, because not all sites um, like to do that <clears throat> and then anybody that carries out or performs the independent uh, annual sprinkler test first thing they'd like to do is review the service and maintenance requirements and if they're not available then they don't know if the sprinkler system is serviced and maintained in accordance with one the standard whether it be BSEN 12845 or uh, LPC standards and two what the frequency of the visits are by the contractor and what is expected of the um, owner occupier responsibilities so we, we, we it's imperative that these uh, service records are kept and are maintained on site especially the logbook and the records as as as, as there for sprinkler systems that should be kept on site as well drawings and calculations if you if you've got them um, equipment and uh, specifications and data sheets uh, any test schedules and inspections the reports uh, any certification for the system and obviously the staff training for the system any changes, modifications and alterations should also be requ required as the uh, review of hazard every quarter. They should also be kept on, on file as well. So certification. So certificates of conformity for sprinkler systems can either be uh, the LPS 1048 certificate of conformity or a completion certificate or the fire ass certificate. Um, they're dependent on the continued uh, regular service and maintenance by sprinkler contractors. So if your sprinkler system um, has been awarded a, a certificate, it is only valid provided that there is a service and maintenance regime um, in place by a certified sprinkler contractor. Uh, and this is covered under the LPS 1048 guidance note. So this is a, an LPCB requirement under the LPS 1048 scheme. Uh, and basically, as, as highlighted there, the continued validity of certification is wholly dependent on the sprinkler installation being maintained and serviced by an LPCB certified or registered sprinkler installer with service included in its uh, ISO 9000 scope. We'd also like to say that um, from an insurance point of view, your insurance may also be affected by non-compliance to the requirements of service and maintenance of the sprinkler system. So if you're not providing a compliant um, service and maintenance regime for your sprinkler system, you should please check with your current insurer to see if that has any effect on your insurance. And I know time is ticking on, so we're coming to the end of it. We've now completed the requirements for service and maintenance in terms of going through the weekly to 25 yearly. Uh, just like to recap the learning outcomes and what we've discussed during this webinar. So hopefully you've enjoyed it so uh, and, and learned something from it. So there's a legal requirement if you've got a sprinkler system uh, or so a fixed firefighting system. Uh, system um, that it's serviced and maintained in reasonable order under the fire safety order. 
the slight uh, the understanding between BSEN 12845 and the LPC rules. One is a life safety requirement, minimum standard, and the other is more uh, geared towards uh, insurers' requirements for property protection and business continuity. The responsibilities for the owner-occupier, the contractor responsibilities to provide uh, the owner-occupier with a uh, fully compliant uh, service and maintenance regime. Uh, you now understand there is service and frequency requirements. Um, compliance with regards to if you do not have a service and maintenance, it invalidates uh, your certification uh, under the schemes and it may also have an effect on your insurance. And the, the most important uh, is record keeping of the service and maintenance activities and anything to do with the sprinkler system are kept. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank you all for your time and listening to this webinar. Hopefully, uh, you've all found it very informative. However, should you have any queries relating to the webinar, please send these in to inquiries at the fpa.co.uk. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, this webinar has been recorded and uh, will be on the open area of the Risk Authority website. And we've also provided you a link there with a free download of LPC Technical Bulletin TB203. Um, uh, like I say, this whole slide pack is available uh, and downloadable from, like I say, the Risk Authority and also the link there to uh, a free uh, copy of uh, service and maintenance sprinkler requirements. Right, thank you all very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.